Hey guys! Here's the video we promised you guys. Welcome to our tiny house. As soon as you walk into our tiny house, this is the space that you see first. Our huge full-size kitchen. We opted for the tallest possible kitchen cabinets we can get. I think there's a, they're around 40 inches tall and that's really nice because the first two shelves in all of these cabinets is mostly our kitchen stuff and then everything on top everywhere here is overflow of things that we don't you usually wouldn't put in a kitchen but it's so nice to have that extra storage really really nice and obviously all this below here is like we have pantry we have um, spices we have everything here this is a really really nice full-size kitchen and even this side actually we're not even using for a kitchen we're using it more for like tech gear and camera stuff because we have so much room which is really really nice and that's why we chose to go with the really big kitchen because you can go really tall when it comes to a tiny house that's what it's all about when we designed it and worked with this whole thing we wanted to make sure that we can go tall as much as possible because you are limited when it comes to the square footage space itself so when we were designing this tiny house we wanted to have a nice waterfall open shelving instead i could have had another um, kitchen cabinet here but i chose to do the three open shelves instead because this way you have this feeling of openness when you look in the direction of the dining the, um, the living room space and the dining room space it just gives that really nice feeling and allows us to store books here and these are great little storage boxes and it just gives a nice feeling of you know this open decor that we really really like instead of having it all fully boxed in and i was a little bit concerned that we we're gonna regret it but what do you think it's been really nice no we, we yeah, wouldn't I really like it yeah we wouldn't have needed that extra cabinet there i don't think no and we we opted out for having not having a microwave yeah we just wanted to have a a range hood that we can use when we're cooking and it has the nice lights here which we kind of use a lot for ambient lighting in the evening and at night but we don't use microwaves for health reasons and we generally just don't like using it period so we haven't used the microwave for years I don't, since like. we've been together actually <laughs> for a very long time we haven't done that so why put one in the house plus honestly this also added extra storage space on top so it's really nice to have this combo. This is a um, three burner. Yeah, three top burner, which I'm not super delighted about. But the builder put this in, didn't really tell us a whole lot about it. Thought we we're going to get a four top, but that's fine. It has an oven, it runs on propane, and it's been working out well. So that's really nice. And you just kind of pop it open right there, just like that, and you can cook. And then when um, you're not using it, you can close it. And then sometimes when I food prep, I just have extra space and I can put the bowls here for the pups, which is really, really nice. But this has been a really nice full size space to use as a kitchen. It's probably bigger than some of the kitchens we've had in the past. And this is in a tiny house, which is kind of unbelievable. When we decided to move into a tiny house, we really wanted to make something that we can do long term. So we wanted to bring in all the things that we usually have in a home into this space and we'll show you in a little bit how all of this flowed in into our house but let's start in with the dishwasher we chose to have a dishwasher in this tiny house it's an 18 inch so it's not a full size this is about ready to be washed but it's a Bosch and they are the only ones that make the small size three rack system that I really, really like. We love this dishwasher. It took us an entire year to get it, but this is one of our favorite features. It has the, um, the rack for all the utensils on top, so you don't have to waste your space. And then we, usually, we typically fill up a whole dishwasher in a day, but it has room for the pups bowls that we really like, and it washes great. You can't even hear it. It's so silent. It's such a great dishwasher. I'm so glad that we had the patience um, to wait for this one because the other ones weren't as great. So this is the one that we chose. The stove we didn't choose. This is what we chose and we're so happy that we did. And next up is our fridge freezer combo. It's usually more efficient to have a 
freezer on the bottom and a fridge on top and JC and I have done a ton of research, gosh, for weeks till we decide on these appliances. And this fridge fridge is by GE and it's amazing. It fits everything. Our pups eat raw, so there's always extra fresh fruit fresh food in our fridge and freezer. And it's usually a little bit packed, but we, we never run out of space, which is really, really nice. But it has great configuration. It's only 24 inch wide, but it's nice and deep. It's only a counter depth, but it feels really nice and deep. And then it has two amazing drawers. They are filled to the brim. <laughs> Our pups eat raw. We eat a lot of meat and fish and we go fishing. So this is like, it's, it's packed. It's absolutely packed, but it's amazing. It's got another rack here on top, but this freeze freeze freezer combo has been incredible. We're really happy with it. It's got the lights in it and we've had no issues. So amazing on those two appliances. And let me show you a little thing that we did here. Cause JC and I were trying to figure out how the heck do we have a full size mirror in our house? Cause it's hard not to have a full size mirror. I feel like those are the things that get overlooked when you live in a tiny house, but both JC and I like having a full size mirror and this is so lean. The door opens against it. You can't even feel it. It's just hung up with a specialty Velcro that we can pull down but you can't even tell it's in the house and it's been so so nice so some tips for you guys if you're gonna go tiny is just find a place like that where you can have the conveniences that you like and also before i forget we're gonna have a full vlog in the description of this video where we're gonna leave the model numbers and different things for everything we have in this tiny house including our decor and whatnot whatever is available online we'll have it here in the description of the video the vlog so definitely go check that out our appliances, how does it all work? We are plugged into the grid, which means we're using electricity, but we're not 100%, meaning that we're also using propane. That is our second source, but everything in this home that we chose is super energy efficient. And you know, when it comes to the appliances, and then we have a tankless water heater that is in the bathroom behind the toilet. And that is run on propane and that only comes on when we need it it's on demand so this way we don't need to have you know energy use all the time and it's super super efficient this is propane and then our fridge freezer is propane is um is actually electric but it's been incredibly efficient and obviously the dishwasher is electric and also our mini split is electric and the mini split is a heat and air conditioned combo um the heat would work well in climates that are normal i guess <laughs> how would you describe it where well, it's a bit more balanced but given where, where we temperatures live, don't go below to, zero yeah like negative weeks. 20 or you know <laughs> things like that and super windy and all that stuff so the heat because heat rises right so the mini split when the heat comes down it's not as efficient but the air condition is just what the husky squad ordered <laughs> they really really like <laughs> the air condition it's in a great space it it really flows into the whole main living area so that is electric also all of our lights in this home is all led so they're really really efficient um and our electricity bill on average is probably around if you average it with the air conditioned unit in the summer i would say it's like 20 25 bucks a month to the max to the max and I think that um, a lot of it is owed to the fact that we use propane for the water heater, the tankless water heater, and for cooking. Otherwise, our bill would be way higher. So one of the absolute highlights and must-haves of this kitchen was a toxic-free cookware set. I've been wanting something like this for so long, and for this tiny house, I was like, that's it. That's what we're gonna do, toxic-free cookware. Let me show you. We have the perfect drawer for this. I love this. This is our entire cookware set. This is by Caraway. This is a 100% toxic free cookware brand and it has everything. It comes with these amazing storage, storage um, shelves, if you will, that kind of snap into each other. Because the surface of this Caraway cookware is so nice and smooth and the nonstick works so well, 
the food ends up tasting so good because it cooks evenly, nothing burns, and there's no better feeling than knowing that everything that comes out of this kitchen is healthy for all of us. I make everything for JC and I in this when we have guests. I warm up the squats, bone broth in here. I make golden paste in here. It's such a good feeling to give healthy food to our family. I really like it and this is the best addition and our favorite thing we have now in our tiny house kitchen. If you want to step away from the toxic type of brands, this is the brand to try. I highly recommend it. It's been amazing for over three months now. Be sure you check the link in the description of this video so you can get these for a discount. It won't last long, so be sure you take advantage of that. The colors are to die for. You guys helped me vote on the sage color. Thank you for that. I was kind of torn between the pinkish kind of color because we have dusty rose in the tiny house but we also have sage so thank you for the vote i really really like it and i know that you guys are gonna love it too all right let's make food for all of us and then we'll continue with the tour of our tiny house So many of you guys already know that we feed the Husky Squad a raw food diet and this has not changed here living in our tiny house. We continue doing that. With our freezer space that we have and how we organize our home, we did not want to compromise feeding the squad kibble. That's never going to happen. It feels so good to feed ourselves and our dogs a real fresh food diet. There is no better feeling. And we really can't think of ever going back to kibble. The benefits of raw food is amazing. Their little faces just light up every single time we get ready to feed them their food. Their menu always changes. They remain youthful, they're happy. They feel so, so good. For those of you guys who want to learn how to do it and who are ready to take the plunge, be sure you go check the link in the description of this video. Go take our Kibble to Rock course where we teach you how to do this. It includes a 15 week transition meal plan to make it easy for you and you will get an amazing foundation to understand what it means to feed your dog a complete, healthy, nutrient dense and affordable fresh food diet. Good girl, you in love. Here you go, girl. The first 50 students who use the code TINYHOUSE will get a discount on the course and we can't wait to welcome you. Be sure you go to huskysquad.com and take advantage of the discount code so you can begin this amazing journey with your dog. Nicolia, where's your lum? Where's your lum? There it is.
This is the family room, the dining room, the storage room, and even a guest space to sleep. This is a very special place. It's also time for snacks for the pups because it's evening time. And we always usually do little training sessions and little things in the evening. But this place is U-shaped as you can see. It's got huge open windows even all the way to the top. And these cushions over here, JC and I so cut them actually ourselves. We cut the foam. I sewed the cushion covers and I also sewed these these covers here on top of that because this way I can wash this every week and then obviously pick the color scheme you good boy Nikolai and this is the place where we sit and hang out together we watch movies we spend time it's super deep I can literally just sit all the way back in here and this is actually bigger than a twin size bed and longer than a twin size bed so you can definitely have one person sleep here and when we first moved into the tiny house the first few nights JC and I actually slept on here with a twin size mattress <laughs> as crazy as it sounds because we didn't have anything else at the time because we were waiting for everything to arrive but it's so comfortable we spend so much time here and this is actually also going to eventually be um, dining for at least six people we're gonna have a table here in the center and Two people can sit super comfortably on each side and two people can even sit on this side if you're into getting cozy and one on the other so we can actually host six to eight people here for dinner which is really really nice you good girl Yuna um, so this is that part all of this I don't want to get the pups up right now but all of this underneath here is storage everything is super deep storage it's so versatile I mean Honestly, when you have a tiny house, you have to really think of those things, how to make spaces multi-use, and this was one of the very important features that we wanted to do in this tiny house, and we're so happy about it. And because the pups like to jump up here, we like keeping a rug because even though the floors are not super slippery, they're still slippery enough. You go, boy, Nikolai. We could so, also make it into a giant size bed. That was going to be the secret I was going to keep for the next video. <laughs> but that's kind of our plan that we're working on to turn it into a giant size bed because these cushions would actually fit here in the middle and it, it becomes way bigger than the king size bed, which is really crazy. And actually, if you just see if you come and show them around here, this is also so nice here in the winter time because when we hang out over here, our tiny little wood stove is facing here so we can see it when we're sitting out out here and spending time it's so cute this thing is so little it's this tiny little stove with a tiny little handle if you see my hand you can gauge how big this is and this is the big version of the wood stove and obviously we only use this in the winter time but my god this thing makes the house really really warm this is how we stay warm in the winter and we got this adorable little set here that we can clean which I, you can tell we use this a lot we can clean and grab the ashes this is to use to poke the the little tiny logs that we have we'll do a video for you guys in the fall in the winter it's this place is just out of this world cozy it's so nice and that's really what we wanted here you know a lot of people when and even the builder tried to convince us oh you know you should really do white walls because you know, when you live in a small space you want it to be you know feel bigger and i was like we're not trying to run away from the fact that we live in a tiny house we want this you know and we really wanted to create a cabin feel a chalet feel like we we stayed in switzerland and i mean no cabin or chalet would be complete without a wood stove so that is was an absolute requirement it's so cute it's completely wall mounted this is a nice little tray to catch any of the ashes when you're cleaning and it has saved us a ton on electricity because this thing provides so much heat this is like a double walled flu it's just it's amazing and it really completes the cabin chalet that the look that we were after and in the fall in the winter it's just 
really really wonderful and the pups really really love it and this brings us into our dining room which is temporary we uh we eat here right now there was this extend extendable foldable thing that that it came with the tiny house but it was not well designed it was flimsy the builder didn't do a really great job so jc pulled it out we repair the panel here and now we have a very nice clean space but we eat here a lot jc and i this is our space where we end up eating but we're working on some other ideas how to make it more because we like sitting across from each other or kind of like you know facing each other that way and we don't have that here but for now this works really really well so a lot of people are wondering how we can live in a tiny house with three dogs i mean we were gonna do this with four dogs actually and everyone has room as you saw in the u-shape here in our in our living space there's plenty of room for all of us to hang out which we already have that space um, but honestly the husky squad is so bonded with us that no matter the size of the house that we've had they're always right under our feet right next to us right up against us they do like being outside in the garden but then they come back in and they just want to be next to us but honestly how we pull this off in general is obviously you think about these things like a big comfortable couch right where they can all hang out but it's really more about the training you know they have to be trained well like some dogs can't even eat in the same room but when we feed the husky squad we taught them that the ones who are in charge is us. We are the ones that are feeding them. We're the ones that are providing the environment. And through our training methods, we can even feed them in this space in such tight quarters because they understand that they'll get fed. They don't have to worry about it. They, will, they won't have to fight for it. They know that we're always going to be in control no matter what happens. So they trust us that they're going to get their food. So our training method is really what enables us to live with three huskies in a small, in a tiny house. So we're definitely going to pass on so much more about this subject, about training your dog, no matter the environment you live in. But when a dog is well trained, you can live in any space, even in van life, which we were going to do before we decided to do the tiny house, right? So if you have problems or if you want to bond better with your dog, create a better space and a, a better environment, no matter where you live and how you live, definitely be sure to go to our website, huskysquad.com. The training course may already be out by the time you're watching this video, but if it's not, be sure to save your seat because we will be sharing everything you guys have been asking about for years how we live so peacefully with our pups no matter where we are whether we're traveling staying in airbnbs traveling across the world to europe living in the tiny house and all the other crazy things we have in mind for the future we're gonna share all of that with you so be sure you check that out of course it'll be linked in the description of this video kimari where's your drool your drool already fell off? <laughs> oh, good boy. Yuna. Good girl. Is this cheddar? Yes. Sharp cheddar. I mean, that's good. No wonder why they like it. <laughs> they love cheese. So we have, um... In this tiny house, we have two wheel wells. And the two wheel wells make this step here. And we thought that putting the water bowl here would be the perfect spot because that way it doesn't have dust flying on the water and making the water dirty. So this is a good spot for the water. And we have this entrance rug here just to catch any dirt, excess dirt that's coming off of their paws. We usually take off our shoes, so it's mostly stuff coming from from the outside, from the gravel and the dirt outside. And this runner here is, is amazing. We used to have this where we used to live and we brought this one with us. And you can see here that you can take it off and we can wash it. Yeah, wash we throw this in our wash machine, which we'll show you in a little bit, our wash machine that we have. And we do have to clean it, 
clean the underside underside too sometimes because it collects some hair, obviously. Husky, yeah. Huskies, you know. <laughs> and I think once you have the washable rugs, you just never want to go back to regular rugs. <laughs> Cause oh, yeah. it's it's so nice. We wash these rugs so often. And this is where we have our cheese. And we have some binoculars here. So we can check out all the wildlife. And our light for the night. And here we have this um, shoe rack system here. It's really nice because, well, as you can see here, we fit six pairs of shoes and then we have some flip-flops under here and it also has this coat hanger which is really nice right now we're putting our hats on here my papa wolf hat and mama wolf mm -hmm. and then also we can we can also use this as a table like a little table for like a catch-all this is uh victoria's camera it's, it's a toy. huge honker. It's like a brick. <laughs> it takes really nice pictures though. I love this camera. And this is our desk. This is where we do all our work. This is where I edit videos. This is where Victoria does her magic. <laughs> this is where the training course is being worked on. And That's where JC's magic happens. All those YouTube videos that you guys see, this is created here. Like this video. And we have, I have a bunch of hard drives here, and Victoria has some hard drives for, uh, for photography. And we have some little tiny Mac minis inside here. These are pretty nice sized monitors, they're 24 inches, and I know it seems like we're sitting really close to it, but it's, it's amazing to have a, a really big monitor like this. It, it, um, it helps so much when editing videos and photography. Yep, and we sit super close to each other as you can tell. Yeah, one of our <laughs> friends made fun of us that that uh, if we're able to work together and sit next to each other for this long, that we were made for each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we were thinking about building a hutch that kind of comes from the side here and covers the top, maybe about this deep. Plus, it may create like a little nook over here. We talked about having some photos of Titus and some little memories of him Maybe right a, here. a plant right here. Yeah. So that's the plan for the space. And our chairs are so comfortable. They were not even meant to be office chairs. We've had but these chairs for so long. <laughs> yeah, they're really, really nice. They're super comfortable and they're nice and lean. So there you go. This is our workstation. Oh, and this is our coffee station. I forgot about that. This is this is where JC is busy every morning. That is his coffee is a space. Keurig, but we don't buy the little pre-made Keurig pods. We he makes his own coffee. We make our, our own. We grind our own coffee and just put it into this little mesh cup. So and I'll leave everything. Yeah, I'll leave everything in the description so you guys can check those out. But we also have a coffee press, but with this move, we haven't been able to <laughs> to find it. Yeah, there's still a lot of stuff in in a small storage box that we need to organize. Yeah, but this is like our little nook here. We also have a mini compost, our water filters here, our honey, and all that good stuff. That's all there in that space. Up here is our bedroom. It's loft, and the way we get up there is using this ladder right here. It's a little bit heavy, but it does the trick. I think it was kind of like a, a last minute makeshift ladder that they built before they delivered the house, because it was one of those tricky things that we couldn't figure out how to, where to put a ladder and how to get up there. This is our bedroom. This is where we sleep, JC and I. It's got two nice windows. One is perfect if it's raining, we can keep it open in the back. And the other one on the side provides really nice ventilation. It kind of gives a little pitch up here, the roof, so I can sit comfortably. JC too, at some point here, he can also sit here. And we did compromise a little bit of height here because we are mattress snobs. We love comfortable mattresses and honestly, this is the most comfortable mattress we've ever had in our life and we've tried a lot of them. It's actually from Ikea. I'll leave it linked in the description of this video too in the blog. 
if you guys want to try this one out it wasn't even terribly expensive it wasn't cheap but it wasn't really really expensive but it's so comfortable it's i think 10 inches right 10 inches thick mm -hmm. so in the smaller space obviously you're gonna get a little bit of reduction on height but it's so worth it this mattress is amazing we sleep so well here and with this really nice woodsy interior seeing the wood here seeing all the trees outside it it feels like we're camping year around and it's really really nice this bedroom has this little lip here that you can put whatever you want we have um candles here in the back and a couple of other knickknacks a couple of plants over here um i sewed these cushion covers to match um our our sofa covers downstairs because i wanted everything to flow I'm so into aesthetics, so we really wanted to make this place feel like it's what we wanted. And obviously, um, our Titus plushie is here. He's with us upstairs all the time. Um, this was a gift from a very special person, Ocean the Husky, who uh, gifted us after Titus passed away. And he's always with, with us here upstairs. And um, yeah, this place is our little nook and it's probably the only place in the entire house that doesn't have dog hair <laughs> that we don't have to vacuum 24-7. Um, so it's, it's really comfortable. We do miss having the pups in our bedroom because they always slept with us in our bedroom. But for now, this is what we're doing and we really like it so far. But if we convert the, the, the downstairs to that plant giant um, bed, the squad definitely has room on that space and they'll be able to sleep with us there sometimes when we want to sleep downstairs with them so you know gonna be happy yes because she likes to sleep right next to jc's leg that's her favorite place so we'll probably figure that out and make that happen but yeah this is the entire bedroom on the sides here are two two um closets well you can't really call them a closet per se but it's got these like pull down doors and this is enough for us per season in here. So this is my side, JC's on the other side and it's plenty for what we need. We don't need more than that, but we definitely can only keep one season at the time here and we cycle it out, which works out really good. But um, that's it. And these, these lights are so nice at night. We turn these off and it becomes the magical ambiance in this place. And it's a really comfortable environment i never thought that i would be okay with sleeping upstairs in a tight loft like that but i think everything being wood and having the two makes a huge difference yeah the two windows it's the, cozy with the, the wood, wood especially i yeah. i can't recommend this enough honestly I, i'm so glad that we didn't go with what the builder tried to push us into and what usually everybody does with tiny houses that everything is really white it doesn't feel like it's part of nature. When I look at this, it goes with the, <laughs> with the outside. It just, it just makes sense. It feels like we're always in nature. So that's our bedroom. Some people compromise and kind of make it like a three quarter bath and just go with the shower, even though they like bathtubs. We didn't want to do that. We wanted the bathroom to be a place that we like. I really like taking baths. So it was important to us that we get a full size tub. So there it is. Here's our full-size tub. And again, you go vertical when you're in a tiny house. So we got this little caddy that we can hang it instead of on the shower head that can cause damage to the shower head. We hung it here. We have a nice tile look surround that we really like. And it's a nice full-size tub. It's deep, it's comfortable with a nice shower head and also a clear shower curtain because this allows light into the shower when we're showering whether it's from outside or from the lights here and it still has the same nice woodsy feel we opted for a compost toilet with a very special design i had the builder create for us um, this houses all of the um the wood chips if you will the special compost material some of you guys are familiar with that instead of having a separate bucket and things floating around we just mimicked an actual toilet you just open the lid and you have the sawdust in here and then you can use it it, look, it looks and feels like a reg like a normal toilet but it's not I actually like it even better than a regular toilet but we also have the full what is it called like a flange yeah, yeah. we can install a regular toilet right if we, if want, we to. want to so both options are there a flush toilet 
Mm -hmm. And another thing we didn't want to compromise on is go with a washer-dryer combo or go wash clothing outside that some people do when, have, when they live in a tiny house or they, or they do the combo, which I read has so many problems. Instead, we opted for a um, stackable washer and dryer. They're separate units, not the combo, because if one breaks, then we can replace just one instead of both or fix one instead of both. And we really, really like it. This is also an appliance set that we chose. And instead of having the builder choose it for us, we did a ton of research. It's also a GE. And what I actually found out that I didn't know before is that some electric, like I knew that electric dryers can have um, where this unit that collects water and pulls out and then you can dump the water, but this is actually an electric vented dryer and I had no idea that that exists until we researched this one and we bought it. So this is a really nice dryer. That's, that's probably a little bit more um, electricity intense than intensive than using a gas dryer, but the propane dryer was gonna be too difficult. And I honest, I dry so many clothes outside in the summer anyways, but it's really, really nice to have. It works really well, really fast. And this is a great combo unit, it's 24 inches um, wide, barely, and 24 inches deep. And we even have room here. Every little inch matters in a tiny house. Our extra towels go in here. So again, this is the stuff that we didn't want to compromise because we wanted to be able to live here comfortably for as long as we want as having this, this washer and dryer set, which is really, really nice. And lastly, we have here a nice full-size vanity. It's got all our stuff in it, very comfortable. We're not lacking any space. It's really, really nice. And then, um, of course, a bunch of stuff in here too where we store our laundry detergent, overflow of hygiene products, and a nice size sink. It's nice and deep. There really is no compromise um, when it comes to this bathroom. Nice frosted window. It's also an exit point if it needs to be. But um, the last thing I could think of is our right behind this little panel. That's where our on-demand propane water heater is. So that lives in here. That's where all the pipes are. Right. This is the stuff that JC messes with. I don't touch <laughs> these things. Um, when it comes to this stuff to maintain in the house, and JC's gotten a hold and he really understands how all of that functions. So that is the bathroom. Another thing to be really mindful when living with animals in any home, dogs or cats, um, we don't have cats, but we think it's quite similar, is that every being, human or animal, needs to have their own nook their own little space of where they can feel like it's their little designated space. That is so, so important. And it's the same for tiny houses. They need to have a designated space that they like. Sometimes it will take you a little while to figure it out, what it is that they like. And it took us a little while because they kind of told us what they like. This is Yuna's favorite space. And this is why we have a dog bed in this house. Because Yuna likes her dog bed. She spends a lot of time here when we're working over there at night she likes to sleep here unless she gets to sleep next to Papa Wolf JC then it's a whole other story but this is Yuna's space and that's why we she likes it huh that's your little spot mama love mm, you good girl I mean it do it does take up extra space to have this dog bed but I don't mind it you know sometimes we put it on the sofa she'll go there too but she really likes being next to JC so she gets a spot. That's her nook. Now Kimari's nook. This is Kimari's nook. Kimari, I know it sounds really, really weird, but for many, many years now, any place we go, wherever we travel, Switzerland, Croatia, any Airbnb, any house we stay in or bought, she will always find the bathroom, <laughs> the smallest bathroom possible, if she can go in the shower, she will go in the shower. But if she can't, she will try to find the smallest place and she'll go, what do we call it? There's a word we gave it. She'll go introvert. Introvert. <laughs> she'll go introvert. So she introverts. This is her introvert space. She likes her alone time. Mm hmm Especially if, if friends come over, definitely there. She, she goes and she um, also... 
She also gets food drunk here. She likes doing that. So because we've noticed a pattern that that's what she does for so many years now, we know that she also doesn't really love dog beds. So she likes pads though. She enjoys pads. So that's why we got her a little pad here and it's washable. I throw it in the washer and the dryer. And she's happy, look at her face. <laughs> so that's Kimari's little nook. So Mr. Nikolai, because the girls ended up picking their own little nooks, he is getting all this sofa space to himself. He spends a lot of time here. He relaxes here during the day. He sleeps here at night. And Kimari came out to extrovert a little bit, which is a rare occasion. You go, girl, all oh, kisses. Oh, I love you too, sweet pea. Oh, you're such a good girl. And another spot Nikolai likes to be a lot is actually on the top of the stairs, right, right by the door. That's his other favorite spot. But otherwise, this is his nook. He really enjoys it. And given that he's so young and all the training and work that we're doing with him, we actually don't like for him to adapt a place too much and own it because it's not good for him at this stage in his training and his, his stage and his age but we definitely know that this is the place where he likes to spend a lot of time. So that is the story about the pups nooks and I hope it gives you some ideas what to think about and you can help your dog or your cat have a little nook. You notice something, give him that space. It really helps with small spaces even though it's weird. Like he married in the bathroom, it's been like that for so many years with catering, catering to her and making her happy in this environment is really really important to us so this is why the husky squad is so happy they got their nooks in here they can be close to us and they have a big outside space that they can roam and enjoy when it's not hot because when it is hot they come and take advantage of this air condition we're about to settle in with the squad for our evening routine which we'll show you in a little bit what that's like it's one of our favorite times of the day after working after doing all these things that we're busy with in this little space it's so comfortable to do that but and this is where we watch movies sometimes we kind of just lay back on the side here with our laptop and any side because there's so many sides we could pick yeah. it's so so comfortable just watch a binge watch some youtube videos and <laughs> <laughs> maybe a movie or series sometimes that we like once in a while yeah this is a really nice place and Yuna really likes it because she gets to be next to her papa it's her favorite thing but um, we are planning to film a update video on the tiny house where we're actually showing you guys the outside yeah we're we're gonna start working on the skirting and um, we're actually working on a, on a mini shed already so there's yeah, a we lot. Need, we desperately need some storage space right now so, <laughs> so we're trying to finish that up. Yeah because we we have some things that we got before we we planned on being in a tiny house so we mm -hmm. had some overflow especially <clears throat> like a lot of canning stuff and we have a lot of camping gear and all those things so not everything can fit inside the tiny house so we'll show you guys our solution once we're done with that so we'll do like a fall winter late fall early winter updates on the tiny house and what we're gonna do to the outside to make it even more magical than it already is i'll show you a little bit more of the surrounding area too mm -hmm. so we're really looking forward to give you guys an update on that don't forget guys that everything we talked about whether they're products or whatever we mentioned in our in our video today is linked in the description here where we have a dedicated blog be sure to check out the kibble to rock course that's the one where we teach you how to feed your dog raw. We'll have a special going on for just the first 50 students who use the code TINYHOUSE. We'll get a discount on the course because we want to inspire you to feed your dogs a raw food diet. It's amazing. So definitely go check that out and everything else we talked about in the description of this video and this blog. It was so nice to have you guys. It's so nice to share this our home with you you know it's been something that we've been kind of keeping to ourselves for a little while so it's nice to share it with you and we are looking forward to share with you guys the updated video of the magical outside and how we handle fall the beautiful wood stove hopefully we'll have the table done by then and other things we're working on 
and yeah we're gonna go we're gonna go relax with the pups right now and we'll show you what that's like episode we'll show you the actual village of St. Moors before exploring more of the enchanted countryside here in Cornwall and then setting sail for the highly acclaimed Helford River. Welcome to the town of St. Moors. We're just going to take a quick look around the beach then.